Uh, meanwhile, to Ron Paul, who remembers that crash as well, and marvels at the folks who refuse to see the conditions for a potentially even bigger crash if we do not address our underlying financial ills. Um, Congressman, you've long warned that Washington has been sort of dilly-dallying in the face of, 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 of issues we can't put off, but it does. How bad could it get? Well, probably worse than anybody ever conceived of, and they would think 1987 was rather minor. And when you look at it, I'm fascinated with a chart on, on NASDAQ uh, in this last several years, 30 years, because that is a mere blip. That was a, a blip. If you look at it, I think people would be honest about 1987, it was a, uh, a bull market correction, and it turned out to be very minor. And I remember when that happened, I thought, if this is a bull market correction, how big will the bull market go? And it was gigantic. You know, it didn't happen immediately, but, you know, up until 2000. I work on the assumption that the real bear market in stocks has start, started in the year 2000. And if you, if you go into uh, the uh, value of any index, it's all lower than it was in the year 2000. Nobody's made any real money since uh, 2000. So, yes, I think they're going to go down uh, continuously, but I think the big crash is not necessarily before us because I think the crash has already occurred and that we're in a bear market for stocks. Yeah, but, but if you think about it, Congressman, we've essentially doubled from where we were four years ago. That's so the Obama yeah, people remind it. us, and they talk about the fact we've come off that. Now, I'm going to have a market uh, yeah, legend here who's going to talk about these things called dead cat bounces, whatever you want. But the fact of the matter is we have come off our worst levels. But you step way back, and you, you said that, that this can't go detached from what's going on in Washington, right? And, 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 how, and play that out for me. No, and you can't detach it from monetary policy either because bubbles come from the Federal Reserve. And the bubbles are encouraged by excessive spending. Excessive spending encourages the uh, Fed to create extra money. They can't tell, they can't tell where the money is going to go. And many times it goes into stocks, sometimes it goes into houses, and sometimes it goes into the pockets of the bankers and back to the Fed again. They can't predict that. Well, All by the way, the Fed could money. be setting up another bubble, right, Congressman? I mean, an artificially, really artificial bubble with, with, with bonds and interest rates that if that were to be pricked, well, I mean, well, man. I think we I think we live with it. It's been made worse. Not only do you have the moral hazard of the uh, Federal Reserve, but you have the moral hazard of the pres president's working group on financial markets, the so-called plunge protection team, which was established in 1987. And I, I, they're very active. Uh, they were very active in OA, and look at what they did behind the scenes, and look how they spent trillions and trillions of dollars. Uh, so people get, you know, thinking, oh, they'll take care of us, they'll take care of us. But I think that just allows the distortions to get much greater. So the Absolutely. distortions are there. The and cure is worse. The cure is worse than the underlying illness. Um, on on the short run, they don't want the cure, right. but on the long run, let me tell you, uh, what's going to come is a lot worse than uh, taking the medicine that we need right now. Congressman, thank you very much. Good seeing you again. You're Hearing you, at least. Uh, by the way, we're going to have the congressman's son, Senator Rand Paul, who's going to trash everything his father just said. No, I, I don't think he's going to do that. 8 p.m. tonight on Fox Business Network. Talk about a guy who says we have to get tough in Washington to avoid anything. Rand Paul, tonight, his prescription might unsettle you, but he says we have no choice on Fox Business.